Here are some reminders and tips as you work on essay two. Remember that most of you will be using the topic that you used for your proposal presentation, so you can use much of the research that you did for your proposal presentation. Of course, if you decide you wanna switch your topic, that's okay, as long as you're focusing on an issue facing Pierce College specifically. So I want to just go remind you of the requirements, go over them, and give you a couple of tips. So remember that your thesis has to include a claim that supports a specific change to a policy or a practice at peer. So it has to be something concrete and tangible. Uh, in your thesis, you might want to consider using a plan of development. Remember, that's where you list the subpoints of your essay. You list the main topic of each of your body paragraphs and the order that you will discuss them. You don't have to do that, but that's one option if you want to keep your essay really nice and organized. You always want to include the who, what, or sorry, so what or who cares, uh, what we call the secret sauce. There's another video lecture on that, and you practiced doing this last week when I gave you a thesis statement that was earning a C or a B, and you added something to turn it into a debatable A-level thesis statement. Make sure your proposal is concrete. It should be something specific that could actually happen. And of course, it should be feasible. Uh, if it seems like it might not be feasible, you would want to explain why it's financially uh, feasible or possible. And then consider making your thesis more debatable by adding a counter argument or making some sort of concession within your thesis. I always like a thesis that begins with an although clause that includes your debatable claim plus a so what. So do take a look at those sample thesis statements from last week. Remember that somewhere in your essay, you have to describe the problem. This could be in your introduction uh, as part of your hook, as long as it pulls the reader in, or it could be the first body paragraph. Think about essays that we've read so far. For example, the really long essay that we read, a case for or the case for reparations, spends most of the essay uh, forming the uh, or describing the problem right, going through the context before actually getting to uh, the solution at the end of the essay. So you could have a paragraph or even a couple paragraphs in which you identify and describe the problem. Um, you do need to have a hook in this essay, especially because you're writing a proposal essay, right? You're pitching something, you're talking about how we can make the campus better. Your hook is really important. So you can try an anecdote. A personal anecdote is okay for this essay. After all, you are a peer student, uh, so you would be a great authority figure here. A shocking statistic. Of course, you want to make sure um, you find that statistic using a reliable source. A common misperception that people have about the issue. A quote from a scholar or an expert or even a student. Explain the context of your topic or the history of your topic. Explain why your topic matters. You can use one of the templates that I showed you earlier in the semester, a they say, I say move, write what other people say and then what you're gonna say. Or you could describe something in vivid detail. I've had students um, write essays about the need for um, better parking structures on Pierce, uh, on our campus, and that can seem like a pretty dry and boring topic, but when they begin Begin their essay with a really vivid description of a student um, drenched in sweat, carrying a heavy backpack with books, trudging all the way from the bus stop onto uh, the center of campus. That can be really vivid and descriptive and pull us in and make us feel just very viscerally um, what that student might be experiencing. Somewhere in your essay, you have to have a clear connection between the proposal and the problem, right? So you're identifying a problem uh, in order to explain how we're going to fix the problem. So make sure that you connect those two things and be careful with your assumptions. Go back and study the Toolman model. Remember behind your claim, you have certain assumptions or warrants. Uh, and then for those warrants you have backing, you may wanna use that structure of argument in your essay. And make sure your reasons and your solutions are specific and concrete. Uh, you can use a combination of factual evidence, logical evidence, anecdotes, uh, ideally, you have a variety of evidence types, right? So you have some data, some statistic, uh, some statistics, some uh, hypothetical examples or constructed examples, anecdotes from students. So make sure you use a variety of evidence types. 
Somewhere in your essay, you have to have the conditions of rebuttal or address the naysayer. So of course, you want to review the Toolman model. You want to thoughtfully answer or address any objections. Remember, this is really important because um, you're going to be making some sort of argument about something we need to do to improve peers. So you want to think about what somebody might say. What would a reasonable person say who maybe disagrees with your point of view? And it's okay to make some concessions. I think that only makes your argument stronger. This could be a paragraph or it could be a few sentences. You might find that you need an entire paragla paragraph to fairly address the other point of view. Think about Rogerian argument, which we studied a few weeks ago. You want to make sure that when you address the other point of view, uh, you don't fall into any straw man or ad hominem fallacies. You want to make sure you fairly address the objections of the other point of view and then explain why you disagree. You can use first person for this essay, but you don't want to use first person when you don't have to. So get rid of announcements like, I think, I believe, in this paper I'm going to argue. Of course, if you're talking about your own experience on campus or taking online classes, you can use I or first person, but avoid unnecessary announcements. So as you're writing, think about the proposal essays that we have read. We've read My Free Range Parenting Manifesto, Defending Free Speech on Campus. We also read The Case for Reparations, which you could argue is a type of proposal essay. How do these authors use different rhetorical appeals? So experiment with some of these devices in your own voice and style. Try using some figurative language. Um, try using all of those elements of style that, we've uh, that we talked about earlier in the semester. Think about how you're going to organize your paragraph. So while I didn't require a detailed outline for this, hopefully you have some sort of outline so you're not just throwing your ideas against the wall. You have some sort of structure of how you're going to organize your essays. Like I said before, you might have an entire paragraph about context. You might have a couple paragraphs about the problem and then a few paragraphs about the solution, maybe a paragraph in which you address a naysayer or potential objections. Um, think about the order of your ideas. You might want to use emphatic order. That's when you save your most powerful example for last because you want to emphasize it the most. Or perhaps your examples follow chronological order, time order, or some other ordering device that makes sense or another ordering structure that makes sense for you. Remember, you have to have quotes from primary sources as well as secondary sources. If you've forgotten what the difference is, please make sure you go back and look at that lecture. So for our purposes, a primary source is some sort of campus specific source. So it could be a document from the Pierce website. Maybe you find um, a, an agenda or the minutes from an ASO uh, meeting. You can find that on the Pierce website. If you go to the student uh, section or the student tab, you can see um, um, ASO minutes from meetings. Uh, remember, Pierce is part of a district or part of the Los Angeles Community College District, so you might also find several policies listed on the LACCD website. You can look through the college catalog, which lists a lot of the rules and policies that students might not even be aware of. Of course, we also have social media pages. Pierce has a Facebook page. Different departments have Facebook pages and Instagram pages, so look at social media. Of course, that wouldn't be a scholarly source, but it would be considered a primary source. You can also check out the student newspaper, The Roundup. Uh, I think you'll be surprised at how great The Roundup really is and how students often have uh, the scoop and the inside information are student journalists. So take a look at The Roundup as well. So you need one primary campus source. But of course, you also need scholarly sources. And for our purposes, they have to come from the library databases or a book or an ebook. I recommend trying uh, these databases, Academic Search Complete, Gale, or EBSCO. Those are general research databases that have articles on a variety of different topics. And remember to alternate your search terms. So for example, if you are writing an essay in which you're arguing that teachers at Pierce need to spend more time, whatever discipline they're in, they need to spend more time teaching students how to determine uh, what information is credible or valid. You might search terms like information literacy college, but if you don't get any results, you might try things like media literacy or fake news, right? Try different terms uh, because unlike Google, a lot of these databases don't know what you're trying to say. So you might find that you use one term and you don't get any results, but you change the term, you use a synonym and you get several results.
You can also try OneSearch, which I've linked here. Uh, OneSearch searches a lot of the databases at the same time, but the downside is it doesn't search every single database. Uh, you might also have luck looking at discipline-specific databases. So when you click that database link that I've included right here, uh, the librarians at Pierce have listed the databases in alphabetical order, but they also list the databases by subject. So they give you databases that will be really helpful for different disciplines. Now, this is an English class class, but since this essay is a proposal essay about some sort of campus policy or campus procedure, you might want to try using the education databases that are listed. Or let's say I have a student in this class who's writing about the need for more engineering classes and more partnerships uh, with engineering firms or aerospace uh, firms in the LA area. You might find a really good article uh, by looking in some of the science databases or the engineering databases. So not Every discipline has a database associated with it, uh, so you can use these general interdisciplinary databases, but you might have some luck uh, looking for a discipline-specific database. And of course, you can always use a book or an ebook. Don't be discouraged if you can't find an article that's about exactly what you're talking about. You're not going to find an article, I don't think, about free speech on our specific campus. Actually, you will because there was a big lawsuit involving free speech on our campus that gained a lot of traction and a lot of media coverage, so you might actually. Uh, but you might not find an article about you know, biking on Pierce College or the need for scooters on our campus uh, or the need for parking lot Wi-Fi for students during the COVID crisis at Pierce College. But you might find articles that are about colleges or universities or even high schools in general, the topic that you're discussing. So maybe you can't find an article about scooters on our campus, but maybe you find a really good article about bikes at UC Berkeley. Right, That can help you. You can use that and connect the dots between bikes at UC Berkeley and the need for scooters at Pierce College. So don't be discouraged if you can't find a source that's about exactly what you're talking about. Chances are you can find something similar to it and connect the dots for us. Don't forget to use college essay format, MLA format, double space, 12 point font, uh, Times New Roman or Cambria or some other legible font. Uh, please don't forget MLA format and of course to indent all your paragraphs, you need an introduction, uh, several body paragraphs and a conclusion. And don't forget your works cited page, which will have several entries because not only are you citing your primary source, you are also citing your scholarly sources. So I hope that helps and I look forward to reading your essays.